Hey guys, I'm Prodder Chief from Airsoft Team Kilo23. Welcome to my updated guide on how to shim an airsoft gun's gearbox. Now in the last guide, I made that several years ago I believe, there were several inaccuracies that in this guide will be corrected. Now for this guide, we will be working with the G&G Combat Machine RK47's gearbox. I already have this thing perfectly shimmed, so if you guys want a step-by-step kind of walkthrough of how to shim a gearbox while someone is shimming it and not after it's shimmed, but this one I believe will be pretty helpful to you guys that are new to airsoft gun shimming. Now I'm going to go ahead and take all the gears out of here one by one and remove the bushings that have also set in there. Put them on the gear axles so I don't lose them and screw up the shim job that I've done. Then I'm going to install one gear at a time, show you the shimming height that I did, and tell you exactly why I did that. Now, to be honest, you can start with either the bevel or the spur gear, but personally, I like to start with the spur gear. A lot of uh, high-speed techs, I know they tend to start with the bevel gear. To be honest, it's just a matter of preference, so whichever gear works for you guys. All right, the whole idea behind shimming is to get the best transfer of energy from your motor to your piston. Now the best way to go about that is to shim your gears as low as possible. Now that may seem kind of weird, but I will tell you why that is true. Now like I said earlier, I like to start with the spur gear. On the bottom of this I put a 0.1 millimeter shim. Now the reason I actually put a shim there at all is because this gear was grinding just a little bit on the bottom of the gearbox when it had no shim under it. So therefore I put a 0.1 shim in there which is the smallest shim I have right now, and it stopped grinding. So that's the smallest increment I can currently make. If you're just starting to shim your AEG gearbox, I feel the best way to actually check the gear height on each gear is to put each gear in there without any shims and see how it works. If it's grinding, then you'll work with it eventually. If not, then you'll kind of know how high to shim it later on. Now, like I said, I put a 0.1 millimeter shim under the spur gear, and it spins pretty well. Not a lot of uh, stress there at all. Now on top of the spur gear, I put quite a few shims. I think it was a total of like a 0.7 or 0.8 millimeters. It's quite a bit considering. The reason I did that is because I don't want any upward axial movement. I can have a little bit, but not too much. Now I feel the best way to continue here is to shim two gears at a time. When you shim all three, it's just a lot going on. It's hard to tell what is meshing properly with what. So. To really move on from here, I highly recommend you go next with the sector gear, which is the gear you see right now. Now I recommend you put this gear in here with no shim under it and no shim on top of it. That way you can see if and how much it may grind on the spur gear. Now if it grinds, I recommend you start with a 0.1 shim and move your way up from there. Under my sector gear, I only installed a 0.1 millimeter shim, the same as under the spur gear. The reason for this is that it gets very, very, very close to the spur gear without grinding. That indicates that it has a very good power transfer between the two gears. That way there will be no weak point and the gun will last longer without actually breaking teeth. On top of this gear I installed a 0.2 millimeter shim. The reason for this is that I don't want too much upward axial movement on this gear either. Remember, you can't have a little bit of axial play in your gears when your gearbox is together and you move the gear back and forth but you don't want too much or else it could create weak points between gears. Now the last gear in theory that you should have to shim is the spur gear. That's this gear that you see right here in front of you. Now this can be kind of tricky sometimes to shim, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not that difficult. Like the spur and sector gears, try installing the gear without any shims under it or any shims on top of it. Now with the gear installed, I'm gonna go ahead and close the gearbox and now I'm gonna show you something really important. Now that I have the gearbox shell closed, without any screws, try putting your motor into place and see how much this bushing pushes up. The idea is to try to shim the bevel gear exactly where the pinion gear has it right now. Now when you install the motor, it is going to push the bevel gear upward just a bit. See the idea is to try to have enough shims here so it pushes down just enough so you get a good meshing height with the pinion gear on the motor. Now I know this seems really complicated to you guys, but trust me, once you get the hang of it and once you actually get your hands inside the gearbox and try things out, it'll make a lot more sense. Just a quick note, the bevel gear 
it can have the most play in the gearbox. Keep in mind you don't want a ton of play because it actually could cause a weak point in the gearbox which could potentially break teeth, which is obviously not good. On the other hand, you don't want too little play because it could actually lock up the gears, which in turn is not good. Now remember, what you're looking for is for all the gears to engage at a good height so they have the best energy transfer while not grinding on each other. That means you want all the gears as close as possible to each other while not grinding. You can see that the sector and spur gears are both really, really close together, but they're not grinding when you turn the gears. The spur and bevel gears are also really, really close together and at a good height with each other, but not grinding and not too far apart. Now the final step for me, you don't, guys don't have to do this, but this is just my personal preference. I like to hook up the motor and nothing else. He's got the motor and the gears turning. Hook up a battery and try it out. Now that is actually really, really quiet. I'm actually very happy with the shim job. Hopefully you guys have learned a little bit from this guide. I really, really hope it was educational and helps you guys out. Thanks for watching. I'm Prodder Chief Marisoft Team Kilo23, signing off.